my name is Iris Franz. Today we're going to continue to talk about Slavsky equation. In particular, I'm going to compare and contrast the difference between normal good and inferior good. So we know when the price of a good changes, say if the price of good one goes down, then most likely the quantity demanded is going to change. And the change in quantity demanded, we call that the total effect. And we can decompose the total effect into substitution effect and income effect. So today I want you to first remember that substitution effect will always follow the law of demand. So what is the law of demand? The law of demand is just this. We have a negatively sloped demand curve, meaning if the price of a good goes down, then quantity demanded for that good is going to go up and vice versa. So substitution effect will always follow the law of demand. So how does that work? If the price of good one goes down, then substitution effect is going to tell you, hey, good one has become relatively cheaper. So you should buy more good one to replace good two. So that substitution effect, you can see when price goes down, substitution effect asks you to buy more good one. And therefore it follows the law of demand. And what about income effect? Does it also follow the, good, the law of demand? Well, that depends on whether you're talking about normal good or an inferior good. A normal good, income effect will tell you to follow the law of demand. So here's how it works. If the price of good one goes down, then we know that even though your income did not change, but the purchasing power has gone up. So income effect is going to tell you, hey, you are relatively wealthier now, and good one is a normal good, so it's something that you like. So you should buy more of that. So you can see when price goes down, income effect tells you you should buy more, and therefore that will be uh, following the law of demand. So if the good is a normal good, it will follow the law of demand. But what if the good is inferior good? Then your income effect is going to tell you, hey, you know what? The price of a good goes down and the purchasing power has gone up. And because this good is inferior good, so income effect is going to whisper in your ear, hey, you don't like this good, so you should buy less of that. So you can see income effect, it might follow the law of demand, what depends on whether it's normal good or inferior good. If the good is a normal good, then it will follow the law of demand. And you can use this to help you to memorize that. So if something is normal, then it should follow the rule, and the rule is the law of demand. But if something is not normal, meaning it's inferior, then it defies the law of demand. So that's how you can memorize that. And finally, when we have an inferior good, you know that substitution effect and income effect is going to whisper in your ear two different things. Because if the good is an inferior good, income effect is going to tell you, hey, the price goes down, so you should buy less. But substitution effect, we know that it will always follow the law of demand. So when the price goes down, substitution effect is going to tell you, hey, you should buy more. So you'll be like, should I buy more or less? Well, it depends on who has a louder voice. If substitution effect has a louder voice, meaning the magnitude of the substitution effect is bigger than the magnitude of income effect, then you're going to end up buying more and we end up following the law of demand. So the good is a non-given good, meaning we still follow the law of demand and the slope of the demand curve is still negative. But what happens if your income effect is louder than substitution effect? That means income effect says, hey, you should buy less, 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 less. And substitution effect, so maybe buy a little bit, tiny little bit more. So eventually your income effect is going to dominate and you end up buying less when the price goes down. So you can see price goes down, you buy less, you violate the law of demand. And therefore, we have a given good. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about the two diagrams. One is given good, the other one is not given good. But before that, I hope this helps and have fun learning Slavsky equation. See you next time.